I never get tired of this view. Yeah, it's a great place to live. And I'm grateful for the visit, Hermes. Thank you for this gift. Though, if I'm being honest, I am a bit nervous and excited. I just don't know what to expect. Don't mention it. As I said, the mescaline will take effect in 14 minutes after eating the cactus. Whatever you do, don't try to fight the experience. Go with it. It will lead you right to your true self. And whatever shadows you meet, don't run from them. Embrace them. Okay, I hope this works. Don't worry, it will. Thanks, Hermes. It's only a psychedelic trip, right? What could go wrong? Remember what I said and you'll do just fine. Thanks. See ya. Got it. So welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing great. So today I'm playing a new psychological exploration game. Uh, it's called as Young's Labyrinth. It is based on the teachings of Swedish psychologist named Carl Jung. So this game allows you to talk with your inner archetypes and reveal your true self. So it looks pretty awesome to me. So I hope you guys enjoy this game and thank you so much for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. Let's do this. Yes, indeed. The shadow resides within you, brave traveller. Seek your inner archetypes. You must make peace with them. Seek the three behelet stones, one black, one silver, and the last, crimson. Let them guide you to the arch tree of life. You will find yourself there. Enter the labyrinth. The rest is up to you.
right. Who are you? I am the warrior. The warrior, huh? Well, what do you want? To win. Why is it so important to win? All I want is simple, to have my own way. And why is having your own way so important to you? Because my way is the best, and others are weak. Why do you assume that everyone is weaker than you? Look at them. That's all you need to do. But I don't think that everyone is weak. Oh, they are. They have no discipline, no willpower. They listen to their every impulse, these weaklings. Why is it bad to listen to my impulses? Because it gets you nowhere. You will stay a nobody for the rest of your pathetic life. No status, no power. No threat to anybody, just a weak coward. Wait, do you think that I'm a coward? Yes. Okay, that's a bit harsh, but tell me what I can do to bring more of your energy into my life. Stop being pathetic. You have to figure that out for yourself. But I really don't know, and I do want to change. So what should I do? That. Do. Just start doing instead of your pathetic thinking. Now leave me be, I have more important things to do. of spiritual development is to recognize the satanic tendencies that characterize you and to fully wrestle with them and to integrate them. This is the thing. It's not so much to cast them away. It's to transmute them. And you can see the difference between people who have done that and people who haven't, at least to some degree, because people who haven't integrated their shadow are naive. Someone who has integrated the shadow, they're, they're dangerous in the martial arts sort of way. They are dangerous, but they don't have to be. Their presence radiates the potential for habit.
Jung's student, Eric Neumann, used the analogy of physical organs to help illuminate the concept of the archetypes. Just as a body is structured by organs, which are largely formed prior to birth, so the mind possesses psychic organs, which structure it, the archetypes. Just as the physical organs operate without one's conscious awareness, so do the archetypes. Jung divided the psyche into three major realms, consciousness, the personal unconscious, and the collective unconscious. These three realms are not closed off from one another, but constantly interact in a compensatory manner. The conscious realm is one's field of awareness, consisting of those psychic contents that one has knowledge of. The conscious realm, while extremely important in its own right, is, according to Jung, dwarfed in scope by the unconscious realm. The unconscious consists of those psychic contents which one is unaware of, and Jung divided the Hello there. And who are you supposed to be? I'm your inner child. I see. And what is it that you're looking for? Nothing. I just want to play. You just want to play? Why? It's fun. I could do it all day. Don't get me wrong. Playing is fun. But don't you feel a little bad that you haven't been productive all day? No. Quite the opposite. I just love running around and playing. What do you mean, running around? You mean, inside the labyrinth? Yes. Sometimes I get lost, and that's no fun. I get scared, so I often stay in the garden. It sounds scary to get lost. What do you do when that happens? I call out, and the caregiver comes to rescue me. I don't know what I would do if she abandoned me. Just thinking about that makes me want to cry. Well, don't cry. Is there something I can do to make you happier? Sure. Don't ever grow up. When you grow up, your heart dies, and you won't be fun to play with anymore. Hello there. Who are you? I am the caregiver. And what is it that you desire? To take care of others. It fulfills me. Why? I don't want to be selfish, and I enjoy helping others. Even though they may not want it. All the better. I can guilt trip them and control them that way. Well, why would you want to do that? So they can never leave me. What do you mean? If I do everything for them, then, they will be forever dependent on me. Like the child over there, that will never grow up and will have to stay here with me. I thought that you were compassionate because you were helping others, but this just sounds very selfish and evil. What are you talking about? I am as compassionate as I can be. I give him nothing but love. Everything he needs, I provide. But he'll never be able to grow up or become independent because he'll always be dependent on you. I know, I know. But I just love him so much. I can't let him never leave me. But you must. Otherwise his anima will stay locked in here with you and he will never find a proper woman for himself. I didn't realize that I was slowing his growth that much. I... I thought if I took care of him all the time, he'd never leave. But I guess it's exactly what will make him hate me if I'll keep overdoing it. I see your point, Billy Carly.
there? Who are you? I am the orphan, alone in the world. And what do you want most out of life? To belong, to fit in. Why is that important to you? Isn't that obvious? I don't want to be left out. I wouldn't know what to do. I need other people. I am alone in the world. But you're not alone. There are people that care about you. Do I? Yeah, sure. Who would want to be friends with me? I don't know anything. People forgot about me. They use me and throw me away. I am nothing. No, you aren't. Look, you are inside the labyrinth. That means you're on the hero's journey. That's important. Focus on that. Stop! You don't know anything about me! Of course I do. You're part of me, after all. And if we want to get through this thing together, we're going to have to work together. But I don't know if I can do it. Look how deep the labyrinth is. Wouldn't it be better if we just didn't try this? I would rather stay where I am. We can't be afraid to take a step towards that that makes us uncomfortable. Come on, I'll show you how to do it. All right then, I will try. No one ever supports me like this, so this is quite a surprise. Thank you. that Jung brought forward very strongly was the idea of the projection of the psychic contents, projection of the active imagination onto processes and objects in the exterior world. In the case of the alchemist, it was the swirling chemical processes in their Olympics, in their alchemical vessels, that they projected the great round of the archetypes onto these chemical processes. They saw crystallization, sublimation, separation as statements about the contents of the psyche as much statements about the exterior world. Because for them, the firm division between mind and matter that is built into Western thinking now did not exist then.
traveler from a faraway land. Some call me Seeker. You're a Seeker? What are you seeking? I'm seeking a better future for myself. I can't stand a life where I would have to work in a meaningless job. I'm looking for my true self, really. But your job is not meaningless, is it? Of course it is. Or should I say was? I made us quit the horrible job. We'll find a better one anyway. Our inner creator is thanking me. Wait until you meet him. He's quite a guy. He was dying every day in the job. Our soul was dying. I saved us. You may be right about that. But what are we going to do now? That's easy. Work on our independence. We don't need people in our lives. Only a few close ones that are important. We are content with being alone, remember? That may be true, but we can't stay alone our whole life. Never settling down, never committing to anything fully. I mean, we could find a girl. Another girl? How am I supposed to lead us to wholeness if there's gonna be a beautiful girl around? We wouldn't be able to get out of the bed. Anima would possess us immediately, like she always does. No, thanks. I will rather travel alone. That's a fair point, Seeker. I'll leave you to it then. Come to think of it, I don't want to settle down either. The one they call the rebel? 
The rebel. <laughs> what a name. And what are you after? And why, oh why, should I tell you? Because I cannot continue without knowing you. <laughs> you were imperfect. Most of you is completely useless. And I want to get rid of that. Well, you haven't been doing a very good job then. I want to change, but not by destroying myself with drugs. But alcohol, drugs, and saying fuck you to your boss are pretty life-changing. You may be right, but that's not going to do us any good if we can't make money and live the way we want. Huh. Look at me. Do I look like I give a shit? You ignore me most of the time, so why should I help you? You deserve what you got. It's true. I have been ignoring you, and for a long time, so just tell me what to do to fix it. What would you like me to do? Oh, I don't know. Something simple. You know, real easy like. Like, I don't know, quit your job? I can't do that. I'm not quitting my job. Ooh, well, unfortunately, there's nothing to talk about, Dan. Please, close the door on your way out. Please, I will do anything except quitting the job. All right, all right. I'm on a vacation, at least two weeks, somewhere nice. And also, I want a new girl. This one is becoming boring, if you know what I mean. All right, you've got yourself a deal. But if I do this, you have got to stop making me come to work drunk. Whoa, 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 hold on there, buddy. No one said anything about that. <sighs> All right, deal.